Hey guys, this is Saptashi here and welcome to our YouTube channel. So last few video tutorials, we were focusing on convolutional neural net, which is actually a specialized deep learning architecture to handle image kind of data. Okay, And we have discussed about Linet 5, which is uh, one of the uh, initial and most popular uh, networks. So today we are going to talk about AlexNet, another very uh, popular uh, CNN architecture. Okay, so uh, let's do a quick recap of Linet 5, so which takes uh, input of an image of a digit. Okay, so a hundred and digit, and you know that uh, the, this will be arranged. So any image will be arranged in rows and columns, where uh, individual cell uh, items will correspond to pixels and will have the uh, intensity values, right? And then you have convolution layer. So convolution layer actually uh, extracts uh, features out of the image. So maybe ages, maybe some feature related to texture. So all this uh, it, it can find out. And then you have pooling layer, which actually does spatial compression, as well as uh, this uh, actually makes your network invariant. So that means that you know if if this eight actually comes in a reduced size, okay or comes at a separate place of the image okay or you know there are uh, noise there so this layer actually you know makes uh, makes your architecture invariant of that so there can be a little bit of distortion but it can still do the classification and finally you have fully connected layer okay so this you can think as uh, <clears throat> the feature extraction layer and this is your classification layer okay and uh, if you look uh, there are 10 nodes in the final fully connected layer because there can be 10 different handwritten digits from 0 to 9. Okay, uh, so this is about uh, Linet 5, which came around 1998 and uh, was proposed by legends like you know Jan Lekun, Joshua Benju, and etc. Okay, uh, so today we are going to uh, discuss about AlexNet. So let's do a quick comparison. So, first of all, you see the feature extraction layer is now more complex okay so it has much more layers and if you look at uh, the size of the kernels or number of filters uh, you know it is much more in case of alex the image size is also of higher resolution okay and and what these images are you know we are going to go into quite a bit of uh, details in, in a short while <coughs> so and if you look at uh, the fully connected layer so there is no change in terms of number of layers however you can see that the number of nodes in the final layer is actually 1000. The reason is that, uh, you know, this deals with 1000 class classification problem. Okay. And also take a quick look at the image size. So now this is three dimensional because you have separate, you know, separate metrics for the red channel, uh, you know, green channel and the blue channel. Okay. So here is a textual com uh, comparison. So, you know, uh, there are uh, more convolution layers, right? So the feature extraction layer, as I said, is more complicated. You have more number of filters, okay? And uh, Renu is used in activation function compared to tan -H, right? So which makes the uh, training in general much more fast or, you know, that converges faster as you have uh, followed in our activation function lectures. And uh, they used max pooling instead of average pooling. So these also, if you have followed our pooling uh, lecture, you know that max pooling actually finds out more prominent features, okay? And uh, then uh, while training, dropout strategy was used as a regularization technique. So uh, this is not the first time drop dropout strategy was being used, but the authors is really credited uh, to actually use it for CNN. If you look at number of parameters, Linet 5 had around 60,000 parameters, whereas AlexNet had 6 million parameters. So, okay, so by number of parameters, you know, it is like 100 times more and, uh, uh, you know, I would also tell you that this, uh, uh, this actually attracted so much of community's interest. The paper which describes this AlexNet architecture has more than 70,000 citations by now. Okay. All right. Uh, now, uh, let's look at uh, a data set called as ImageNet and this is very, very important because, uh, you know, when you are trying to establish superiority or supremacy of uh, of an algorithm okay, or a method, you need a proper test bed, right? So if you don't have a proper test bed, you cannot do a, a proper experiment. 
okay and uh, so image net is is a you know ground breaking image capturing exercise okay which has a lot of images and based on that there is a competition which happens so we are now talking about a conference which a competition which happened in 2010 okay uh, image net large scale visual recognition challenge in short called as ILS VRC so in the training data you have 1000 categories and you have 1.2 million images okay and uh, so uh, the validation and test data uh, were were not content uh, in the in the training data so actually the data is uh, made very nicely available for you to test your algorithms let's look at some of the benchmark algorithms which were giving best result at that point of time uh, so the 2010 competition the first two entries if you see had your traditional kind of feature extraction followed by the, the then best classifier support vector machine okay uh, which uh, produced a top 5 error rate of 0 0.28 and 0 0.34 respectively so what is this top 5 error rate so it essentially tells you that actually your model specifies your top 5 predictions okay uh, so in terms of probability values and if the actual value doesn't come in in, in this top 5 so that is your top 5 error rate okay and when ImageNet was proposed and, and they applied uh, this on this particular uh, data set, their uh, results were the top five error rate, if you see, was 17%. Okay? So this was quite a quite a big improvement. And actually, you know, though uh, uh, Linux 5 came in 1998, uh, it was taken with skepticism, right, by the community. There was not any, uh, not any uh, no wholehearted adoption. Uh, adaptation from from the community so right, right now you know cnn is kind of the gold standard but it was not the case you know when when uh, we are talking about 2010 so a little bit more detail about this data set okay so some uh, difficult categories were uh, needle and weasel where the top five error rate was 0 0.87 right so these are very difficult to classify because of you know because of uh, the shape of uh, the objects which which you can also understand uh, some difficult, some easy ones were, you know, website, sunflower. So this is about a butterfly. Okay, so butterfly also was a, uh, you know, easy image. Okay, and now if you look at sunflower, there also there were a lot of variety. So in terms of number of classes, right, or type of classes, some classes were easy to detect, like website, sunflower, uh, butterfly, etc. Whereas some of the classes were difficult to classify, like needle, weasel, and etc. Okay. And even in sunflower, there is a lot of variety. So if you look at this uh, left picture, right? So this is a very simple sunflower to understand or identify. However, this one is quite difficult to understand that, you know, this is a sunflower, right? Okay. Now, uh, a quick comparison, a quick comparison with the uh, existing, uh, existing data sets or existing test beds that you had with image. And we will also give you a, quick understanding of what the SVM best approach was doing, okay, that the one that was giving you 0 0.28 uh, top 5 error rate, okay. So first of all, look at this, right. So in X axis, you have number of data samples and in Y axis, you have number of classes, okay. And uh, the the benchmarks that were existing like MNIST, Caltech 101, LabelMe, Pascal, so they are all around this region if you see, right. And look where ImageNet is in terms of number of samples and number of uh, classes. So that's the reason we talk about, you know, this ImageNet so much. Why it became actually a holy grail uh, for, uh, you know, any computer vision researchers, right? And uh, here is a high level schematic of what uh, these guys were doing, right? So they had, uh, you know, dense grid descriptors, so which were kind of, they're kind of based on some feature extractors like, you know, histogram based features or local binary patterns and then they uh, uh, then they form something like a super vector so so uh, something uh, what is happening uh, like flattening uh, in in our uh, just before our fully connected layer and it also used pooling because you know there were a lot of spatial redundancy and finally uh, they were using uh, the linear svm classifier right so you see that uh, you know there are a lot of similarity in what what is being given even happening in our CNN based architectures and you'll be surprised to know that what algorithm they used to train this so they improved 
or they used a improved version of stochastic gradient descent which is called as uh, average stochastic gradient descent and if you pay close attention to the equations you will see that it is very similar to what we have studied in momenta right so where you know we are looking at the previous values as well okay and uh, so so the takeaway from here is that we really need to look at uh, we really need to look at the other state of the art methods and the, the best papers that were there at that point of time that can really give us you know good research intuitions to carry forward even if the model is following following some completely other type of frameworks right okay so one other thing which is not adequately highlighted is that alexnet brought forward something called as local response normalization which is also called as lateral inversion okay so the idea is something like this that let's say you are you you are uh, you know receiving some signal so this is an uh, this is a schematic of the eye so let's say you know you are receiving signal uh, from this a b and c cells right and b is the central cell which is actually responsible or taking uh, is is taking more responsibility of constructing the image for you right so what a and c are doing so they are actually not confusing you with uh, confusing uh, you with uh, sending same kind of uh, signals but uh, or they are inhibited to send uh, you know same kind of uh, uh, signal so they are sending you complementary signal so if b is working on the light uh, uh, light areas of the image right lighter areas of the image then a and c are concerned about the darker areas of the image okay so that makes the image more sharper so uh, you know if you uh, think about pooling so pooling kind of uh, does this thing so basically it it looks at the adjacent cells and and tries to do some kind of an operation on that right but you know you know, you know traditional pooling the feature maps that you are getting like here so and and that feature map so maybe you know if you look at this particular cube so maybe this is because there are four filters right so for each of the filters you have you have got one metric like this right so uh, traditionally what we will do is we will apply the pooling on on uh, this layer okay we will apply the pooling on this layer right and and uh, that's what used to happen however so this was called as intra channel so if i call this as channels so these are this is uh, intra channel uh, you know concerns about one channel but what can be done is that you can do it inter channel like if you see here so you are doing you are applying pooling on multiple channels okay maybe the first cell of multiple channels okay so uh, here is a little bit more uh, you know more on the mathematical side so <clears throat> this is the value or this is the you know uh, pooled value and this is your original values right and what you are essentially doing is <clears throat> so you are looking at n channels n adjacent channels okay don't worry about this mean and max so this just make sure that you don't go out of so let's say you know you are you are trying to uh, find a value for this particular uh, pixel so uh, it makes sure that you know you don't go beyond here and get some invalid uh, invalid filters right so that's why max is zero so it cannot uh, go beyond this and uh, uh, similarly if you when you are going to you know uh, more number of filters you cannot go past the maximum number of channels that are there right so that's why the max and mean are there and very simple uh, very simply what it does is that let's say you know you are looking at this particular cell okay so uh, uh, if i am taking a value of n as 3 or n as 2 you know uh, there is no cell uh, no uh, channel before this so what it is going to consider is it is going to consider this value from this channel and this value from this channel right and uh, and what it is going to do is it actually going to take this value so it, you are getting one from here and you are dividing it by the square of one so you are going going to get one square here so one plus one okay and you will get a value of 0 0.5 so here you are using the value of k as 0 and alpha equal to 1 okay so you will get a value of 0 0.5 now similarly you know you can you can look at another another cell let's say you take this one so here uh, in the numerator you have 2 because this is the intensity value and then you are going to consider 2 2 square plus 2 square in the denominator so it will be 2 by 4 plus 4 so it gives you 0 0.25 all right so that's how you are getting this value of 0 0.25 here okay 
so that that is how actually LRN works, and this was also one of the things that Alex Net proposed. Okay, and uh, there is another thing uh, that uh, Alex Net uh, brought about, which was which was overlapping pooling. So earlier, you know, uh, traditionally uh, there will not be any overlap, and uh, so this is a more formal kind of uh, more formal kind of representation. So you know, uh, a pooling unit can be uh, uh, represented by z into z, okay, and how much stride you are making, right? So that is represented by s, okay. So if you set s equal to z, then we obtain traditional uh, local pooling as commonly employed in CNNs, where there is no overlap, right? But if you set s less than z, right? So basically, you know, it is a two into two uh, filter, but you are setting the stride size as one. Then we obtain over uh, 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 lapping pooling. So, like in this case, they used a s equal to two and z equal to three. And actually, just by doing this, their scheme, you know, reduced the top five error rate by 0.3 percent. Okay, which is not bad, right? And another thing they did for faster training was, you know, some kind of uh, some kind of parallel uh, architecture of the GPU. So, if you look here, so uh, ideally, what will happen is that you know. Uh, all the layers will be connected, all the nodes from the previous layer will be connected with the uh, next layer. But here they kind of took, uh, they kind of took a halved structure, okay. So you have one half uh, of GPUs and or one half of the layers and another half of the layers which will run in different GPUs. So uh, this layer will be training one GPU, this layer will be training one GPU and not in all layer you have interconnection. So if you look at this layer, Okay, so this half of the images goes here, right? And you apply filters. This half of the image goes here, and uh, you apply filters. So there is no no connection over here. In the next layer, however, there is interconnection. Again, in the next layer, there is no interconnection, right? So this actually uh, made the training much more faster. Okay, uh, so so you know to summarize, uh, it is not only the layers uh, that uh, that was brought forward by uh, you know. Uh, this AlexNet architecture, right? So there was this uh, parallel training using GPUs, this local response normalization, and overlapping pooling, which was introduced by AlexNet and was greatly adapted by the community. Thanks, guys, for watching this video. And if you have liked, please you know subscribe and give your comments uh, to this channel.